Celebrating Act Two is pleased once again to be with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and of course, my partner, as always, John Coleman. <laughs> he is. I, I remain John yes. Coleman. And you remain John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Good to Un see you, John. It's unbowed. <clears throat> uh, John, I love the virtual gourmet, the weekly newsletter, free, by the way, to all those who uh, go to johnmariani.com. Because the articles that you, the, you uh, the, the restaurants we review are so good, you make my mouth water. But one of the things that I've noticed, not necessarily a regular item in your restaurant reviews, is when my wife and I go to dinner, we notice bread. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of local restaurants that just make delicious, they make it themselves. And they make wonderful bread. And there's a couple others that just cut up a roll and put it on the table for you. And somehow, as important as that is to me, I don't, I don't get the sense. Of course, it look and look, in the scheme of things, you know, your entree is more important than the bread. But to me, the bread seems to be a wonderful little um, yeah. introduction. And it it tells me something about the restaurant. Do you feel the same way when you review a, a, a fine restaurant? Absolutely, uh, fine or not. I mean, let's face it, at a Mexican restaurant, you're gonna get it, at least some of those uh, taco chips and and uh, the tacos and tortillas themselves would be terrific. At an Indian restaurant, you're gonna get paratha and, and naan and one of those steamy breads out of the tandoori. They're very important, but for European cultures, because you don't find bread, served in restaurants in China or Japan um, or Thailand. They don't, they don't, it's not part of their culture. Um, <clears throat> but uh, in, in Europe, uh, France, Germany, Italy, England, I mean, all of the European countries, I mean, you sit down and the bread is often already there. Or the moment you sit down, especially in France, they will bring you a baguette, fresh, freshly baked, maybe warm, <clears throat> with good butter and plenty of it. Uh, in the United States, it's become a sometimes thing for a couple of reasons. Um, many restaurateurs rightly complain that if we give them bread, they fill up on it, and then they say, oh, I don't really need an appetizer, and uh, I'm not sure I believe that of most Americans, but I do believe an awful lot of Americans who think, oh, if I eat a piece of bread, it's going to make me fat, all those carbs, um, which is equally ridiculous. I know what kind of people those are, and I don't want to sit down with them. <clears throat> but no, bread is essential. It it breaks the meal. It's not breakfast, although with breakfast, most people do have some form of bread, whether it's a bagel or, uh, or toast or anything else. So it's very important. Having said that, um, bread, good bread, and really good bread is very, very difficult to master. Yes. I, I agree. Um, and of course, there's a difference between bread and rolls. And there was a restaurant in, uh, you'll remember it, I think it was the the Washington Arms in Mamaroneck. Sure. That served popovers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Lord. That It made that place famous. Yeah. Warm popovers. That was the bread. The Washington Arms was, was, was famous for that and for also giving away a big bowl of whipped cream <clears throat> at the end of dessert. And the, and the owner said, the more I give away to people, relish tray, cottage cheese, the more they order, which flies in the face of those who say, oh, I don't eat bread. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, the Washington Arms was a wonderful, wonderful place. that both uh, of Long gone now, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Long gone now. But, but, uh, I, I, have, I have a question about, I have a question about bread, though, that uh, I want to be a little contrarian here. Is that if, especially if you're going to a, a really uh, good restaurant, it doesn't have to be $500 a plate. Uh, it could be, you know, $75, $80 a, a plate or even less. But when I go to a restaurant like that, I'm generally going, uh, not having filled up on a big lunch or something like that if we're going for dinner, because I want to enjoy the meal. And I find that what happens is when you get to the restaurant, because they're, once they've seated you, there's still typically a wait even before an appetizer might show up, is that what happens is the bread starts filling it. You, you want to eat something because you're really hungry and you're admiring all the, the aromas in, in the restaurant. And you begin to fill up 
and then maybe not be able to complete a meal that otherwise is absolutely delicious. So I find that the bread sort of, it's there, you want to start eating it because you're hungry, because you're you're seeing everybody else eat. So I don't, I, I don't know whether it's a little bit self-defeating or not. Well, I mean, just, you know, I take food home all the time in doggy bags, um, all the time. And, you know, the interesting in France, <clears throat> my wife, who was born in France, lived in France, would say, you are always expected to finish everything on your plate. And, and the, 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 uh, the idea of a doggy bag was so anathema that they used to laugh at Americans, and even restaurants would refuse to give it to you. Now, maintenant, it is French law. French law that you cannot waste food and that whether you want to take it or not, they're going to give you a doggy bag. Isn't that oh, great? Mm. Okay. That silly French Good point. <clears throat> yeah. Well, but that uh, got anything to do with that trend, now rather old trend of smaller servings? Smaller servings? Smaller servings. Um, except for those tasting menu types where you get one morsel, you know, you get one cheese cracker with an ant on it or something, uh, except for those types of places, I haven't found, I found the opposite. I found that portions in in uh, Europe are uh, larger than ever. Mm. Uh, you go to Italy, we used to get three ounces of pasta because you eat it as a second course, not the main course. Three ounces, now it's four or five. Uh, um, everybody is getting, getting more generous in, in that regard. Okay. Getting back to stopovers, by the way, and talking about how difficult it is uh, to to make good bread. <clears throat> I went through literally a dozen popover recipes, um, and they weren't turning out as my mother's were from Jiffy. Remember Jiffy in a box? Sure. Jiffy corn. Yeah. Jiffy. Those are perfect popovers, whatever whatever they put in there. But I went through a dozen to my son uh, found one. I forget where he called it from, from. Um, but he got it, and he made him just the other night perfection. Um, but of course, he was trained as a cook, and his wife is the one of the greatest pastry chefs in the United States. She's just gotten two awards to that um, to that degree. And she doesn't even mess with uh, bread. They have their bread made for them at the restaurant Gabrielle Kreuter. And people say, oh, it's the water. It's <clears throat> it's not the water. It's, it's really about technique. It is about the flour, and they will have different flour in France uh, than they would in, um, and certainly the flour that they use for German rye and for yeasty breads and uh, 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 shortbread, shortbread and, and Irish uh, soda bread. That has a lot to do with the, the other ingredients, but it's not, it's not the water. Um, but um, it's all of the technique and learning how to make it, and the oven can have a a lot to do with it, yeah. uh, and all of those factors go into it. But you have to really train to become a bread maker. And uh, even in France, the famous baguette is the be-all and end-all of bread. It's the long, <clears throat> crisp yeah. thing. And everybody, and this is not an exaggeration, everybody in France gets up in the morning still and does not have Cheerios and does not even have French toast which they call pain perdu, they go around the corner and they send their six-year-old son, go to the boulangerie and get the baguettes. And he buys three or four baguettes, <clears throat> which will be eaten throughout the day, fresh out of the oven, crisp on the outside, the inside. Well, the French have been complaining about baguettes not being as, as good as they uh, used to be, but that's, that's the French. They complain about all sorts of things. What they do have a right to complain about is that nobody wants to go into an industry where you got to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Your bread, so you'll have all this bread by 7, 8 o'clock uh, in, in the a.m. Um, so they're, they're losing. It's like we're losing farmers. They're losing boulangeries. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that will change the face of France. I think it will. Uh, also, they are buying, the French are buying it, believe it, believe it or not, in these supermarchés, the supermarkets, <gasps> packaged. And, mm -hmm. oh, no! <laughs> Steve Allen, I'm not going to stand for that anymore. That's ridiculous. Well, I think we need to end this with a famous quote, and that is, let them eat bread. That's it. What's she wouldn't have had her head chopped off if she had said that. Right. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube.
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.